on managed projects. This uh, session is uh, designed to help students, uh, particularly in the management diploma, uh, with the first assignment in this unit and particularly uh, focusing on part B, the second part of the assignment. Uh, my name is Derek Hubble, I'm the course manager for the management diploma and I'm going to take you through uh, today's session. So what we'll do is start off with the uh, uh, agenda. Uh, we're going to uh, cover uh, managed projects unit in particular uh, assignment one part B. So there'll be some tips during this tutorial on that particular assignment. And during that uh, session we're going to cover things like uh, a network diagram, a critical path, a Gantt chart, and there'll be some uh, opportunity for you to email questions at the end of the session to our management inbox uh, if you need any further assistance, which I would uh, encourage you all to do. So today's session I'm going to try and break things down as, uh, as simply as I, I can. Um, and we're going to kick off with the network diagram. In the assignment you'll be asked to put together a critical path um, for based on some information on the table that's pre presented in the assignment question. To do that though you need to be able to draw a network diagram and if we go to uh, Wikipedia and look at the definition of a network diagram um, you can see that here it's to construct a critical path you need to model the project with a network diagram and that network diagram is going to show three specific things. One of them is the list of the activities required to complete the project. The second is the time or the duration that each activity will take to complete. And the third element will be the dependencies between the activities. So a network diagram really does these three things. It lists all the activities required to complete the project and their duration and it shows the dependencies between each other. So that's the uh, Wikipedia definition but let's have a, a look at what it specifically looks like because you're going to need to draw one of these in this uh, part B of assignment one in managed projects. So what I've got here is the start of what a network diagram will look like and for the specific assignment question that you've got um, I've started the network diagram with the first three activities and you can see here that activity A is the first activity in the project and that activity actually precedes two other activities in the project and that precedes activity B and C. And so you can see we've drawn a line from activity A to B and we've drawn one from activity A to C just to show the connection between the activities. So the relationship uh, between these activities is that uh, activity a precedes B and C and you'll see that in the particular table in the assignment. And what we should also do um, as we're drawing the connection between these particular activities, we should show the duration of each of them and you can see that I've uh, added uh, the duration of three months for activity B inside that particular box. Now I should point out at this stage that no particular uh, specific software is required. Um, for this assignment you can hand draw it, you can put it in Word, you can put it in PowerPoint, whatever uh, is easy for you. We're uh, really interested in your understanding of how to put a network diagram together. So that's um, the start of what a network um, diagram looks like. And we actually need that network diagram because that's going to help us um, determine the critical path which is what the uh, assignment question is asking us. So if we, again if we go to Wikipedia and we look at the definition of a critical path we can see that a critical path is a sequence of activities which add to the longest overall duration. And we really want to hi highlight that point um, that it's the uh, longest duration. Um, so we'll just highlight uh, there that when we add up all the different paths in a network, um, the critical path will be the one that has the, the longest actual duration in time. Any delay in the critical path will impact the planned uh, project completion date. So it's very important for managers who are managing a project that they specifically manage the activities that are on the critical path just to make sure that the project achieves its objectives. Um, any paths that are shorter than the critical path um, we would call um, subcritical and uh, not as important as the uh, activities on the critical path to ensure that the project's completed. So out of all of that the, the, the real learning is that um, when you're drawing a network diagram and you're looking for a critical path, the critical path will have the longest duration in time. So again if we go to um, Wikipedia we'll see an example of a critical path and you can see here that I've already nominated that for 
um, a particular path, let's say the path B to C. So that's this path here, B to C. That has a duration of four months plus three months. So a total of seven months duration for that particular path. So that's important to know because, as I said, we need to work out um, uh, the duration of all the different paths in a project before we can work out what the critical path is. So that's why that's some important information for us to, uh, to take on board. And you can see I've put uh, the path uh, AE has a duration of six months. And I'm asking a question here in terms of what the path ADF is in terms of duration. So if we look at uh, path ADF, it's quite simple to calculate. We go from activity A to activity D through to activity F to the end of the project. And if we add up the duration of all of those months, we'll calculate that in fact ADF is seven months in duration. So uh, that's how we go about um, calculating the duration of particular paths. So now we know the duration of all the different paths within this network diagram, within this project. The question is, let's determine what the critical path is. Now this particular example from Wikipedia um, has actually got two critical paths unlike the assignment, which uh, there is only one critical path. But it is possible to have two paths. And we can see here that uh, the longest duration uh, path of the project uh, is path BC with seven months and path ADF with seven months. So we need to uh, choose the longest path to determine the critical path. So therefore, a correct answer here would be path BC or path ADF, either one of those. Uh, both of those are a critical path. But as I said, in the particular assignment question, there is only one path uh, that is the critical path. So uh, I hope that explains how we calculate the duration of each of the paths in a network diagram to determine overall what the critical path is. Now some students ask, uh, us commonly in this particular assignment, you know, what's the word count for the earlier part of the uh, the assignment? Were you looking at the life cycle stages of the project, uh, etc.? Um, there is no word count um, provided there, so it's really just important to keep your um, your responses as concise as possible. Uh, and as long as you're answering the question, um, then that's all we're particularly after. So let's um, move on to specifically. Um, uh, part B in the first question about determining what the critical path is. Uh, so what I've done here is um, I've given you a really good start in, in terms of the network diagram you need to provide in your assignment response based on the um, information in the table that's provided in the, uh, the question, the assignment question. And you can see all of the interconnecting lines um, between the activities. You can see the duration of the activities and you can see the relationship between the various activities. And uh, you can see we've started off with activity A and the project ultimately finishes in activity I. But there will be a couple of paths. You'll find that there's about three paths to get to getting there. And uh, you've got to completely draw that network diagram showing all of the activities relationships um, before you can um, tackle the question of what is the critical path. So that's a, a good good start. So once you've finished that network diagram, to find the actual critical path, you need to calculate the longest path in terms of duration. And so your answer will be a sequence of activities um, that will start with A and they'll finish with I. And you need to, need to give us the correct sequence of activities um, in terms of determining what the critical path is. Or similarly, you can highlight it on your network uh, diagram what the, the critical path is. Uh, the second part of that question was to ask you what the duration in months of that critical path is. And that's uh, quite simple. You add up the duration in months for each of the activities that are on the critical path. And we've gone through that in the, uh, the earlier exercises. So that um, will hopefully be enough for you to tackle the question of uh, determining the critical path uh, in the part B of the assignment. And now we'll go on to the final um, element of the assignment, and that is the Gantt chart. 
And if, again, if we go to Wikipedia and look at uh, the definition of a Gantt chart, um, you'll see that it illustrates a project schedules activities. And in this particular assignment, it's showing us and being used to show the project's flow of costs. But it can be used for lots of different reasons by project managers in, in different ways. But in this particular assignment and the context that we're using it is showing us the flow of costs. That's what we want to use the Gantt chart for. Now to see what that actually looks like, I've provided you a template of what your Gantt chart should look like. <clears throat> so I'll just uh, highlight a couple of things here. Across the top of the table, you're going to show each column as a different month. So month one, month two, month three, etc. And you're going to go all the way across the page in terms of the total number of months that you require in, for the project. And on the left hand column, you're going to show all of the activities listed in alphabetical order going down the page. Underneath that, there's two important rows uh, for this particular Gantt chart to show the flow of costs. And one is the total cost per month row. And the final row is going to be a cumulative uh, row of to date costs. So that's the total um, expenditure for the project at any given time at the end of that particular month. So that's what those um, uh, rows have in them and that's what you'll need in your response in putting your Gantt chart together. Now in this particular example, and the figures are for demonstration purposes only, you need to use the figures that are in the table provided to you in the assignment. Um, but just for illustrative purposes today, we're going to use an example where um, of course the project um, will start in month one with activity A. That will be common for uh, all all projects. But uh, what we're going to talk about now is activity B. So activity B uh, is preceded by activity A. And if activity A only goes for one month, for example, then we know that activity B is going to start in month two. And we know that the total cost for um, that particular activity is $10. And we know that that activity has a duration of two months. So what we simply do is add starting commencing in month two, five dollars per month is the cost of that particular activity in the project. It's as simple as that. Um, the other rows that we have in the Gantt chart uh, will track what the cost for any particular month will be. So we can see that uh, in month one there is only one activity, activity A, and that had a total cost of uh, $5 and so for that particular month the only amount of money that was spent on that project was $5. And so the cumulative cost for the entire project after month one is only $5. But when you get to month two there's an activity B entry of $5. So the total uh, cost for that particular month uh, is still only $5. That's the only activity that took place in the project. But the cumulative cost is now these figures of five dollars plus five dollars and I'll just highlight those. So the five dollars spent in month one plus the five dollars spent in month two has a total cumulative cost of the project of ten dollars. So that's how we start to put this Gantt chart together. Now as we talked about activity B has two months in it. Um, and so our five dollars in month two is spent here in month three. That's the final entry for activity B in its final month. But now activity C is also starting in month three. Again, this is just an illustrative example. It's not from the specific assignment. Uh, so the five dollars spent um, in activity C now means that we've spent a total of ten dollars so we're adding those two five dollars together to get the ten dollars spent in that particular month. And the cumulative cost now of the project is this particular uh, ten dollars here that we've already spent in the project plus this ten dollars spent in month three. So that equals a total of twenty dollars. And we just continue to work along um, the Gantt chart adding in the uh, activities on a monthly basis depending on the information given to us in the particular table. So 
uh, I hope this uh, illustration just shows you what a Gantt chart looks like for this particular assignment and how you can start to populate it. And uh, once you've finished populating that particular table, uh, you're done with that uh, particular question. So if we just review quickly what we've covered today. Critical path, first of all to determine the critical path you need to draw the network diagram which we went through in the first couple of slides. To find the critical path we need to find the path within the network diagram that has the longest particular path and we work through how you calculate the, each of the paths in terms of their duration and whichever one has the longest path is going to be your critical path. Now in this particular example we gave you today there were two but in the assignment there's only one critical path and that's more common than not. The critical path uh, question in the assignment will ask you to provide the sequence of the, of the activities in that particular path that you use to get there. So you'll pr provide us that letter sequence that it takes to get from A to I in the longest period of time. And you'll also provide the total duration in months that it took for those series of activities to be completed and, and their durations. So that, that particular response will be in terms of months, total months. And as far as the Gantt chart goes, which we've only just recently covered, um, I've given you a copy of the template of that uh, table that you can use for the Gantt chart. You complete that particular chart using the data from the table that's in the specific question. Don't let the example of the loading dock in the assignment confuse you. Don't need to worry about all the specific activities involved in that. All you have to understand is the um, uh, uh, activity uh, sequence A through to I and the duration in months. Um, it's really uh, only for illustration purposes that we use the loading dock. You don't have, actually have to know how to build a loading dock to attempt this assignment. So look, I hope that um, helps you all with part B of assignment one in the Manage Projects unit. Um, if you have any uh, questions at all um, about the particular assignment, feel free to call the management teaching section which you can get uh, via email uh, on o10.management at tafenewsouthwales.edu.au or you can feel free to call us and we'll only be too happy to help you with the assignment. If you're going okay with part B of the assignment and you need help with part A um, in the earlier part then again just call us and we'll be happy to uh, help you um, uh, attempt the assignment and get it submitted and get some feedback and move on to uh, assignment two. So. Uh, if you do have any questions, please feel free to contact us and I wish you all the best uh, with your studies. Thanks for your time.